Okay, I think we're in. Hi, we are live. Okay, so hi, I'm Nicole with Gives. Um, I lead partnerships. We also have Andrew here with Gives, our co-founder and CEO. Hello, hello. We also have a very special guest today. We have Yasmin with Peel Insights here. Um, as you may know, we have done a few of these LinkedIn Lives. We're getting a little bit of our, our bearings, I would say, but we are absolutely still learning. Um, but we've had a few of our brand partners on to talk about how they've worked with Gibbs lately. This is our first time having one of our partners on board to talk about how, who they are, what they're doing, and we're so excited to dive in. So with that, I'm just going to um, introduce Yasmin at Peel Insights and um, hand it over to you. We'd love to hear about Peel Insights and um, how you, uh, I'll let you kind of intro that and then we can talk about how Peel and Gives is uh, looking to work together and the things we're looking to uncover. And then lastly, we'll wrap with how brands can look to be a part of this. Cool, thank you. So hi, I'm Yasmin, I'm from Peel. Um, and Peel is an automatic, automatic analytics platform for e-commerce brands. Um, right now on Shopify, and it helps them grow faster by seeing what's happening and why with their data. So the, the tool pretty much downloads all the data and then computes it into over 100 different metrics across all the different segment values and all the dimensions you find in the data. Um, and it's like data cleaning, ETL, all of that in one and computes the analysis so brands can see what's going on and saves hours and days and weeks of work. Um, and that's what we do. That's that's awesome. We have seen this with our clients, you know, always trying to figure out, hey, it from a gut instinct, it feels like when we run a gives incentive, it performs better. But is there data that we can actually look at to back it up? And so we're always um, combing through their data. And I'm like, hey, you know what? It would be great if we were just partnered with Peel because they pull all of these insights all day, every day, and we can actually make make the case in that way. So we're we're planning on working together and we'll talk about more of these big things to come. But digging a bit more into Peel, Yasmin, what um, is one of the craziest insights that you've seen from, from pulling somebody's data and, and taking a look at it? Um, that's a tricky question. I guess, so we, like when we work with brands and people have questions about their data, we see what's going on. Um, and I guess what's so interesting, um, and this is across the board, is that it sort of goes to that quote, like, same, same, but different. Like, everybody sort of is the same, but because they are an exciting brand that is acquiring lots of customers, they have an edge in the market. So the numbers that come in and the stories and patterns with their customer types, what people are buying, what they're interested in, the different types of marketing incentives are. It shows so many different patterns. Um, so sometimes when we're when we're talking, we have meetings with brands and do these product tours and they're like, well, why is this number like this? And it's like, well, let's remember, was that like summer? They're like, oh my God, that's summer markdowns. And we see this crazy diagonal behavior with cohorts that it's like people from the fall to spring to winter have come back and purchased. Um, and it's all just based off of the actions that they took and the brand and the value that they're creating in the market and loyalty. And it just appears in the numbers. And I think that's what's super interesting is seeing customer purchasing behavior through the analysis and by the user knowing what they did and their story and who their customers are, they can really interpret the numbers versus somebody who's like outside of it. You just see the data and you're like, oh, okay, this is that. But I don't have the background story and hearing that and the, what they've done and um, experiments they've done and seeing it work or not work is so cool. And it's very satisfying, I think, for people to see that. They're like, oh, shoot, that worked. Cool. Let's repeat this. Let's do this experiment again. Or, okay, so that campaign didn't really work and we promoted this product, but it didn't do anything. Vice versa. Like you see this stuff all the time. So that's that's pretty neat. And I said that's like essentially the essence of data analysis, but they didn't have to do any work. They didn't have to download it, clean it. And it's like right there. Um, so I guess that's what I could think of. Yeah, they don't need to be Excel experts at this point, right? They can Whoa, just. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like break Excel or like expand Google Sheets, you know. Yeah. Um, and it, it's the little, it, sometimes it's the little things. So it's not just like what's your overall LTV for six months or, you know, all those numbers. It's. Um, did a particular product or a particular discount code or incentive like gives 
drive different customer purchasing behaviors. Um, and those, uh, for lack of a better word, experiments are what people find their edge in creating their brand messaging and who they are in the market. And the analysis points them to that. It's not like a gut feeling. And I think that's what makes numbers uncomfortable for people. It's like, you can't just be like, oh, I think it's like this. It's like, well, what is the data telling you? Um, and it's there. It's just like, you have to think about it a little bit. One of the things that we are are always, and I'll, and I'll go off script here for a second, but I feel like one of the things that we're always talking about, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, we've talked to a lot of brands, I've spoken with a lot of brands around this like discount hamster wheel. And if you ran a discount, last year at this time, in order to beat your year over year numbers, you have to run an equivalent or more of a discount this year, right? Um, during that same time frame. And so discounting now to get short to get sales in the in the door now will certainly it will get sales in the door at this very moment. But people often can't think or don't even think about the larger implications of that, that next year, you're gonna, in order to beat these numbers, you're going to have to run the same sale or a bigger sale. And then like, you know, and, and it just becomes this race to the bottom. Have you seen that in any of your clients uh, data? And, and what does what does that look like folks that are trying to get away from that? Is there anything else that they can do? Um. I don't like, like I, we don't go, I don't go through all the data. It's always like off one-off meetings. So I, I can't speak to any particular client, but I guess what we see is depending on, uh, and this is really with anything, but depending on the execution of the discount code or the campaign or the incentive, it just depends on how it shakes out in the analysis. So like you, we do have like we see there's like LT lifetime value and repurchase rate is always coupled. So yeah, we might see amazing acquisition for these months because you ran a great promotion, but then you might have really low repurchase behavior and retention behavior. And then the lifetime value of that group of people is really low. Yeah, right. When you look on the analysis, that's like discounts by cohort, which is just like flipping the hood another way. You're like, oh shoot, that's because we ran this insane discount to acquire a lot of customers, but it didn't actually turn out to be a good customer. And I think the end of the day, what brands are always trying to find is like, what experiments can I do, whether it is discount codes or um, like buy two, get, you know, all these different matchups and right. brands Gift are, with purchase. Oops. Yeah, and brands with are open really information incentive. Yeah. Um, I don't have like a huge library, but there's so many ways that people could come up with not gimmicks, but ways to like excite people to come back and buy something um, to see, oh, what what experiment drives the best customer for us? And that best customer is good returns, which we purchase behavior, gives us reviews. It depends on like what angle they're taking in their growth strategy and using the data could be interesting. So for instance, like, you know how people sometimes do, they want to boost their average order value. So they'll be like, okay, if you buy, um, if you buy like 50, I'm making this up. If you buy like $50 amount, you get a free something. And you see these experiments being run. And sometimes they're great. And they're like, wow, this is actually work. So how do we then mirror this for something else to get the similar numbers? It doesn't necessarily have to be a discount code. It could be a donation. Terry, like you just, it depends on who your customers and what is important to their brand loyalty. Um, and to continue talking on that about, is like with attribution data too. Like who, what, why are people buying from the brand? Um, are they buying from the brand because uh, they're connected to the mission value because they like the product that they hear about you like those how'd you hear about us why are you why do you like us type things knowing that type of data can help them also build really interesting marketing incentives to get them back and messaging and be like oh people like us because they love our mission so now let's tie a incentive related to our mission and then maybe they'll come back and buy again and buy more blah 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 so there's all this stuff it's like very interesting <laughs> And those, and those those attribution. So just quickly on, on the attribution side, do you do, does Peel partner with somebody on the attribution side? Do you guys find out that information? How do you like? I know we we've spoken with like Enquire Labs and some other folks that that do that type of attribution survey post purchase type yeah. of deal. Is so that we, that we, have, we don't collect that stuff. So Peel is not a source of truth uh, right, right now. So we get the data from other data sources. Right. Um, we have a, an integration with no commerce, um, which is a post-purchase survey attribution tool. And they have a lot of amazing data um, right. coming and then, you know, more and more different integrations to get different data sources. Um, but you also see that through what you get in the Shopify checkout too. But for those survey questions right now, we have an integration with no. Amazing. And so it's like, the cool thing is, is like, 
what people ask, like if you ask people, like if you ask, they might, your customers would probably answer. And then you get this data and it's so cool of what you can do with it. It's just more knowledge. And like, then your creative engines can start going of like, okay, how can we utilize this to find similar customers and blah, blah, blah. Right. So if you're using no or something like that, then you may as well be using peel as well, because now you have all this data, you're probably not acting on it in terms of in, in terms of actionable insights the way you could drop it into peel and then see hey all the people that answer the question this way are actually your best customers so why don't we lean into that type of acquisition channel right referrals are just the best uh that are performing the best or discounts are performing the best unlikely or you know anything else performing the best from an ltv standpoint let's let's push on on that type of acquisition channel super super interesting super. it's all about the whole like the more you know like right <laughs> right. The more you know, but but make it actionable because yeah, exactly. I, I'm sure everybody's collecting a lot of data. I we go through this even at Gibbs. We're collecting a lot of data in terms of like how did we have a we have an on the onboarding process. How did you hear about us? And we're collecting that. We're not doing anything with it. So I'm like, you know, <laughs> I don't think Peel like we, we're, we're asking. Peel that. <laughs> yeah, we're asking, and and eventually we will look through that data. But like right now, I'd have to look through it and be like, okay, here, you know, and do all that analysis myself. Having something like Peel is pretty cool to just uh, just wrap it all up. Mm-hmm. Nicole, you want to wrap? Well, us speaking up here? of that, I think yeah, we're just we're so excited to dive into how we're going to work together, right? And I think we're going to kind of wrap this up. There's so much we could talk about, guys. Though, like we could totally geek out. <laughs> on all the data things. So thank you so much for this time. We definitely want to, um, I guess, leave with a call to action on how brands, if this sounds interesting, how you can be a part of this new partnership that we're doing with Peel. And Andrew, do you want to jump in and and start to share that? Yeah, yeah. So basically, if you're a Peel customer listening to this and you want to run some donation-based incentives and then see how they perform over time, please just let us know. Obviously you can DM any of the three of us and we will, we will be uh, readily available to, to chat. If you're a Gives customer and you want to simply look at, you know, Hey, how has, how has the Gives cohort performed over time? I'd imagine everybody will want to look at that. We can, we can get you into Peel. Um, and, and it's pretty much an instant, you know, instant type of download yasmin correct me if i'm wrong but you know download all the data and then we can see the insights from day one which is going to be really cool um and then if you don't use either peel nor gives or neither peel nor gives hit us up because you should be using it and that's why we did this partnership so please 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 feel free to uh to to reach out to us anytime and uh looking forward to this partnership yasmin it's cool yeah Great. Thanks, yeah, guys. This absolutely. was fun. Talk show. Morning talk show. Yes. Yeah, we'll have to do it again. Yeah, yeah we'll bring we'll bring you back. Oh, you good. Were, back I, with like the data stories. That'll yeah, be really okay. fun. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm down for any segment. You just call me. Talk to <laughs> yeah, me. yeah. We'll do we'll do a follow up because now we, we have our first client that we're gonna that we're gonna analyze the data. Yeah. But let's get 10 more of those and then we'll do a follow up LinkedIn live in a couple of months where we say check out all this cool data. It'll be Ta-da. pretty it'll be fun. Cool. Thank you guys. All right, thanks. Bye. 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 Hold on.